I just want to know, can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Hey, y'all. It's Tanya Dallas. Your girl, Alacha. And we hope you can feel the power. You tell her. Right here on Positive Power 21. Woo, woo. You tell him, robot, feel the power. Can you feel the power? Jerry Boys Live. You are listening to Jerry Boys Live Worldwide Podcast. Tell him, robot, little buddy. You listen to Jerry Boys Live Worldwide on Positive Power. Double XI. Double XI, baby. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Come on, y'all. Share this file. Coming up next. Late Night with Paula G, The Voice, right here on Positive Power. Power Radio, baby. Special guest, Shalonda Wild Williams, a.k.a. Inspirational Treasure. Man, we're going to have a great time talking to her, y'all. Woo! All right, bring him on. What's up, ladies? Ladies of Radio, what's up, what's up? Hey, 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 Jerry Voice Live. Jerry Voice Live. Batman feeling good. Worldwide, Batman. Batman didn't get a nap today. <laughs> see, delirious. Why, why not? I had to, go, had to go see Pop Pop. Pop Pop. Pop Pop all the way across oh, town at the right. hospital. Yeah. We was playing yeah, jazz up better. in there. We was playing jazz, but they keep coming in the room talking to him and I. We was trying to chill. Listen to some Kenny G. But the nurses kept coming. All right. Yeah. It's all you, good. You that suit, so. Yeah. What's up? What's up, y'all? Y'all ready to do some radio? We talk to wonderful. you. Talk to your okay. audience. Yeah. Well, look, Batman's on me. Batman about to chill. Go get some more coffee. Because we got the ladies at radio coming up at midnight. That's right. Powerful topic. Woo. Guys did a great job. Deception. Sin. Ooh, they was killing it. All right. Mm-hmm. Y'all have a great show. Amen. All right. All right. Well, family, thank you so much for joining us on Late Night Radio with Jerry Voice Live and Paula G right here on Positive Power 21. Can you feel the power? I'm so excited this evening to have one of my sisters in radio. You know, we have a lot of dynamic guests on the show. Just amazing individuals who come on and share their journey. But, you know, once in a while, it's a beautiful thing to be able to highlight one of my sisters in radio so that she has the opportunity to share not only her journey, but also her testimony and then how she how the two coexist. Because, you know, we all have this thing called a journey. We all have this thing called a testimony, and we all have this thing called life that we're living while we're walking in that journey and while we're living out that testimony, while we're doing what it is that God has has purposed us to do. So we always are blessed by individuals who are transparent and can come forward and share with us a bit of their journey and, and how they kind of juggle it all and how they manage it all in hopes of helping each and every one of us, and encouraging each of us. So tonight with me is my sister from the Christian Party Line, Miss Shalonda Williams. My sister, what is going on this evening? Hey, 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 Paula G. I am honored. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> we about to have a good time. <laughs> we about to have a, have a good time. First of all, I know it's been a little minute, but I but I want to welcome you again to the family, to the Positive Power 21 Christian Media family. Now, you now have your own show here on Positive Power 21 to include being an author, uh, radio host, you're a prophetess. You have so many, so many wonderful qualities and wonderful gifts, and I want you to share with the audience those qualities and those gifts that God has placed in you and how you're using them on your journey, and then we'll talk in a little bit about your uh, testimony and how you're managing it all. So who is Shalonda Williams? (laughs) Man, who is Shalonda Williams? You know what? That's a loaded question, and and, and I'm going to tell you this. 
there there, there was a time <laughs> when uh one of my um my, my sorors from um high, um Alpha Delta when I was in uh the, the Christian uh sorority, she asked me that question one day when we were sitting um eating at dinner and she said, you know, who are you? Who is Shalanda? And so one of, one of the things that I said, you know, no, then she, she went on to say, I'm not talking about the prophetess. I'm not talking about the coach. I'm not talking about the mama. I'm not talking about that. And I was saying to myself, but those things do make up Shalanda. And so um, what, I, what I learned is that people, you know, they really want to know underneath it all who yeah. you are. But what I learned sure. is that, you know, what, but what I learned is that, um, and I'm going to tell you, this is how I learned it. Um, I, I have always been a certain person, right? So I was the, I was the person that everybody came to for their issues, right? I was the person that everybody, you know, um, they respected my point of view, you know, when I would tell them things and then they would be like, oh my gosh, like, how did you know that was going to happen? This is that and the other and all that, you know, so when she asked the question and she said, I'm not talking about the prophets and I'm not talking about the coach. Um, I really didn't have a full answer because those people are who I've always been. Right. I just only found a name for it later. If that wow. makes sense. I, I, I've always been that one. You know what I mean? Like even as far as being a yeah. writer, I'm an author, right? I was, you know, you're going to find this funny, but like I was writing my friend's love notes in like first grade. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, using you know, that, that gift, yeah, sure using was. that gift Early. at six years old. <laughs> but and that's the thing, like, like I think that the Bible talks about us from before the foundation of the world, right? Before we even knew who we were. When God was talking to Jeremiah, He said, "Before I even formed you in your mother's womb, right? I mm -hmm. called you a prophet to the nations." And so, uh, I'm only saying that to say that you know, outside of those things. If, if I took away the titles, you could take away a title all day, but I would still be those things. Like I would still be Shalanda. And so when I got mm -hmm. to, um, when I, when I, when I took uh, my certification in 2010 to be a coach and I was learning all this stuff, I was like, man, I've been applying some of this stuff for years and didn't even know it had a name. So, um, yeah, right. I was like, you know, you could take my title. You can say, you know, I'm not going to ever call you prophetess again, or I'm not ever going to call you life coach again, or I'm not going to ever call you an author again. I'm not going to ever call you an actress again. I'm not going to, you know, all these different things that people could say. And guess what? I would still be that person. Right? So I think and that you, is, yeah. And still doing those is. things. And you, yeah, and right. you, know, you really raised a good point because, like you said, we, we get so caught with the labels, but you're absolutely right. If you take the labels away, you're still doing those things. You're still that person, but it may not necessarily, like you said, and it's, and it's not still having, my character. Yes. Yeah, it's still my and character. It's, like, so even outside of the job of being a coach, even outside of the job of being a life coach, when, you know, the job of being a life coach means I need to create a marketing program so that people will understand how valuable my services are, right? Um, but even outside, even outside of hmm. that, um, when I'm sitting with my family and my friends and, you know, my aunts or my uncles or my brothers or cousins or whatever, and they find me to have a conversation, it's because mm -hmm. the same things that I'm giving to clients for money – right? Or the lack thereof sometimes, the same thing I'm giving right. away every day or the same thing I'm selling is the same thing that I've been doing forever. And so I think that when people begin to ask that question, you know, who is Shalanda? Now, when it comes to, I had to learn how to, you know, be a wife, right? And God is going to bless me again to be married. And so I'm still going to learn some things. Um, I have mm -hmm. to learn how to be a mom. Like, you know, we develop um, over time being a mom. Those are, are, are roles that are given to me. Right. But the things right. that I ended up doing in life, coaching and, and being prophetic and loving the Lord and preaching and teaching, I've always been a motor box. I can talk all day. So preaching mm -hmm. and putting stuff together. See, those things I didn't have to work at, Paula. Like, I didn't have to work at being prophetic. It's I didn't have natural. to work at being a coach. I didn't have to work at, you know, at preaching and teaching. Everything else that was given to me, I had to work at and grow at. So. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I had to, and, I had to understand that defining myself as those things, explaining mm -hmm. that part of me, it wasn't robbing me of Shalanda. Does that make sense? And those, yeah, it does. Because those things that you don't, like you said, that you do not have to work at are those God given gifts, those things that just come to you naturally. And you referred to yourself a while back and, and I can see, I can so see it as, 
an old soul, but I think a lot of that <laughs> comes from that, you know, that natural, those natural God-given abilities to right. speak into people. And like you said, you know, people are, you're the one that they come to for um, their issues or their concerns or whatever they are. So the, the title of coach, the title of Prophet is, is just that, giving those right. things that come to you naturally uh, a title. And I love what you said about creating a, mark, uh, a marketing program where people will see how valuable your services are. And that's, first of all, that's something we should all be doing. You know, all of us that are, that are in this business, yeah, if we an author or, you know, we've written a book or we're a coach or we, whatever the services are, we got to create that, you know, that, that, that marketing program. What have been some for you, and it could be either professional or personal, what have been some of the challenges for you to date on your journey or some challenges that you still might be dealing with as you're you're living this thing called life? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and that, you got some real loaded questions. (laughs) I'm serious because... You know, when you think about a journey, right, and even just to Mm -hmm. to allude to some of the things that I said, right, if I've always Mm -hmm. been that person, that means there's a lot of people who become familiar with that person, right? They become familiar with that's who Shalonda is. You know, Mm -hmm. some people still call me Lil' Londa. Some people, you know what I mean, like family members Uh and friends and people that are close. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and so I believe that probably one of the most challenging things on my journey um, of being called to full-time ministry um, has been that the familiarity of people, um, because when you are when you are when you are trying to pursue something that's already not popular, right? When you're trying to yeah. do the will of the Lord and you're already trying to make yourself fully available to Him, the first mm-hmm. thing you look for is support. I mean, full on support from family, friends, those that are close to you, because the world is already bucking against you. <laughs> right, mm-hmm. the, 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 exactly. the spirits of darkness. The enemy is already bucking against me, and so you look for those who believe in you even more than you believe in yourself. And it's not mm-hmm. to say that I don't have any people who love me or who you know who want to be right. there. I guess as far as their understanding is concerned, but when it's deeper than that, and you can't really find those who will set aside familiarity to really just see you as God has called you to be, it gets to be a lot uncomfortable. You know, it gets to be a lot uncomfortable Mm -hmm. when you have to say, I can't do that the way that Johnny did it. I can't do that the way that, um, that Roberta did it. I can't do it the way that you did it. I just, I have to do it the way that God is telling me. And because we know that God is not conventional because he is so out of the box, a lot of times the things that we have to do or the things we have to say, it's not going to feel good to everybody else, but that's when you need the familiar to take a back seat. And I need you to, to recognize this, this, this journey is not comfortable for me, just like yeah. it's not comfortable for you, but I, I need, you know, you need something more. So I think that that's the most, that's the toughest part besides, you know, um, financial stuff sometimes, but that, that really is, I think if you were, if you felt fully supported, and if people really saw you just as God saw you, everything mm-hmm. else would be benign. It would be like money. Okay, cool. We can have money. We get. I, Lord, what did Paul say? I learned. You know, I learned how to be content mm-hmm. in whatever state I'm in financially. Whatever but state. When you right. Feel, yeah. When you when you don't when when the familiar overrides. What I mean, what's isn't it a saying that says familiarity breeds contempt? Right. So it's like it. I've never found that statement to be more true. Not, not, no other you, thing. You, you, much. And you know what? It's so. It's, uh, there was someone said um, to me a while back, and they didn't mean it in a negative way. When I finish explaining, you'll 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 probably understand it as soon as I say it. And they said that a lot of times, especially when you're in this the type of ministry that we do, the people that love you the most or the people that are closest to you may be the ones that support you the least because of the familiarity. They only right. see you in like it just exactly what you said. They only see you in, you know, a certain pers- pers- perspective of who right. you used, to, who you are to them as, you know, a longtime family member, or a longtime friend. And then when you begin to step out of that, a lot of times, you know, those individuals who have known you all your life can't necessarily make that transition, or it might take them a minute, 
you know, right. to make that transit. And it's not necessarily, you know, a negative thing at all. It's just, like you said, that familiarity uh, right. that that tends to kind of, you know, keep us in a in a box, sort of, sort of speak, when it comes to people who are, you know, who are familiar with us. What, when you, you know, when you lay your head down at night sometimes and you reflect on all that God has done and how far he has brought you, what does that do to you? What does that take us like take us in your head and tell us like <laughs> what does that what does what does that feel like? Um man. <laughs> yeah, like it's like it's like That's that is one of those it. It, is, it, yeah. really, it really, really uh-huh. is, Paula, because, um, man, no, 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 unless you live in, and, and I'm not one of those people who own everything, you know, I'm not the only person with problems, I'm not the only one with money right. issues, I'm not the only one with family issues, but mm-hmm. when a person doesn't really understand, if they've never lived it, sometimes they cannot relate. You know, and so Ooh, I like that. Uh, along yeah. this along this journey, you know, on, on top of just just waiting, right? On top of just waiting on God, making sure you in the right step, you don't misstep, and all those other things. I dealt mm-hmm. with depression, you know, most of my life. Mm-hmm. I dealt with sexual addiction in my life, mm-hmm. in my journey, and so those things that go against what God really, you know, stands for, right? And so when I begin to think about coming through those times and I begin to come mm-hmm. through, feel, I think about coming through um, the many times where I felt like things should be different. I should already have arrived and all these things. But then I begin to think about the fact that, man, God, every time you said you were going to show up, you showed up. Like every, every right. time I felt like I was at my wits end and I could mm-hmm. not go any further, you were there. And when I begin to reflect on the fact that I was sexually addicted and you never allowed me to get so sick that I died or, I mean, I'm not even so sick. I didn't even get sick. I can count on maybe one hand how many times I've had any complications in life. Right. And, and right. when it comes to those, that sin. And so when I think about what I've overcome, the grace that God allowed me, the the, the times that I thought that I was not going to be um, effective, the times when I thought that I was going to want to end my own life, and the fact that I'm here now, and that, you yeah. know, when um, the first show I did, Jerry sent me um, the layout of how many people had listened and, um, and you know, the places that we were going to be heard on it, mm-hmm. um, all this different. And I'm sitting here looking at this thing like, like, God, like, this happened, like, oh, literally, it didn't happen overnight, you know, technically to him. But for me, right. it was like, you know, I've done blog talk radio, but this ain't that, right? And so right, we're moving right. up, God, and you're, and you're making it happen. So, yeah, when you look back over that journey and you just lay there, I could, I could reflect on all the things that are not good. But I, when you think on the goodness, you know, they, it sounds cliche, right, to say when I think on the goodness of Jesus mm-hmm. and all but that he does for me, my soul cries out, what, hallelujah, and that is not an exaggeration, y'all. I don't have a problem with that hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh. It, it can Amen. be anywhere Amen. at any time because he's just that good. He's just that good. Yes. Yeah, and you know we got we got folks listening. Stephen Marshall, he's just thanking you for it and, and praising God because he's saying this is a powerful, powerful message. Uh, Mac Jones is tuned in. Angela Williams, you know, she's saying, "Oh, this is good as well." So it, you, 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 what you are doing and and how you are ministering and blessing people are, are, is truly, truly um, something that God has called you to do. So tell us a bit about your show. Tell us a little bit about your show, your new show here on. Uh, Positive power, inspirational treasure on the radio, man. That, listen, so um, inspirational treasure is the name I, I go by. That's the name that I'm being branded mm-hmm. by, right? You know, I used to be Coach mm-hmm. Treasure and um, I'm Prophet of Shalanda, and I'm all these different things. So God gave me the name inspirational treasure to kind of lump everything together, right? To just say mm-hmm. this is it, and you know, you got all these things under that. But inspirational treasure on the radio is a platform for us to be able to spread the gospel, to spread the word of Christ, while at the same time creating a, uh, a place where people who are coming up, um, who don't, who may not have a voice all the time, to be mm-hmm. able to come on and really just, um, just talk about the Lord and what they have going on. Artists, authors, ministers, you know, we're going to have some poets come on. We're going to have, you know, just some um, 
actors and actresses that just so happen to be Christian. And we're going to talk mm-hmm. a little bit about just what God is and who he is and, um, and just about their projects and um, just shed light on some of the things that they are doing. And also, um, we do have one of my uh, my sister girls um, that she's been following my ministry for years, but I love Will mm-hmm. at Heart, and she does a, a portion called Jesus Girl Behavior, uh, where she mm-hmm. just kind of comes on and talk. Yeah, right? <laughs> just that hashtag. Is wow. Right. And so she comes yeah. on, and she shares her a few minutes um, with us about just being a being a Jesus girl and, you know, the type of mm-hmm. things that, that threaten that sometimes and how we handle it. Um, and then we uh, also have time now that I'm up to a two-hour show to where we're going to really just minister the Word of God and begin to teach people and just bring some enthusiasm uh, to people's lives so they don't just feel like, you know, uh, everybody's trying to preach at me, but nobody's trying to help me live it. So, you know, we're we're just going to bring a little bit of that Mm -hmm. to um, to the radio. Uh, (laughs) Until, until, so give us the show time. And Angela William, Angela William, I don't know, y'all might be related. (laughs) She's saying you are amazing. Angela Williams, I think that's watching. Angela Williams, I think that's listening Uh right now. She is actually Uh in California. We have never met face to face, but she's been following my ministry for probably four or five years. And she's like super amazing. But my sister, my biological sister, her name is Angela Williams too. So I have to try to. That's (laughs) awesome. Determine between which one is which. I have to try to figure it out, but. Yeah, she's amazing. Well, you got you got a lot of folks listening. Al Carter, you got David who's listening. You just have a lot of people that are listening. Hey, y'all. And a lot of people, <laughs> and a lot of people that you're listening. So tell us what the times of your show. Well, um, outside of chilling with you ladies on Friday nights at midnight, right? On, on at the midnight. Christian party line. Yeah, that's that. coming up next. So y'all don't go nowhere after this, but. Um, uh, I'm also on a Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern time until midnight. We are on um, Inspirational Treasure on the radio is on from 10 to midnight on Tuesday nights. Wow, wow. So what, what, what else is coming up for you in 2019? What are some projects? What are some things that you, some visions that you have, some things that you'd like to Ooh, accomplish? <laughs> I, listen, what what has God you. shown you? <laughs> Ooh, this is gonna, it's it's gonna it's so jam packed. Like like he's God said to me like last year and the year before, like I need you in preparation mode. I just need you to line mm-hmm. up things up, put some stuff on automatic because when I get ready to set you off, that's it. Like it's a catapult and, and I think that that's where I am in two thousand nineteen. Um we got so many things up in the air. One of them I won't mention just yet, and um, but it, it's really big. And um, but you know we have um, listen. So my new book is coming in in July. It's been pushed off because. I literally lost it. Like my whole book was lost. It was a bunch of number signs all the way down my paper. Oh, and oh my gosh, don't you hate that? That is the <laughs> yeah, worst and feeling then, and then, when you do all that work. Yeah. And then it's gone. So when I went to go look up the, the preview pages that I already had written out, God says, no, I need you to start fresh. And so I'm um, on my birthday this year, July 11th, I'm going to release, um, my book, No, I'm Not Okay. Don't forget the three W's. In a www dot dot dot. I'm not okay. I'm right? not okay. <laughs> Excuse no. me while I unmasked. And so that's going to come out in July. Um, I'm actually about to be in a couple of short films, movie-wise. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's so much other stuff coming. I'm going to be traveling with the Pink Pulpit International with um, Apostle Marilyn Porter. She's super amazing. I'm going to go with her and minister from time to time. And then I'll be um, setting a book tour schedule, too, for Not I'm Not Okay. And so we're working on that as well. It's just, just they just got to stay tuned, Paula. Yeah. By the people, you like know, <laughs> and, you know, I think it's, a, you know, and I, I'm so glad you said that because I think it's important for those who are listening, and this is encouragement, too, that, you know, my sister Shalonda has not just come on the scene. She's been on the scene for a moment, oh, now, you know, and God, yes, and God has been preparing her over the years for this moment in time and beyond. Uh-huh. And speaking to what you said just a moment ago, you know, when you said that God is in the... um is positioning you 
you know, right. for, in, in a season of preparation. And that's what this journey is all about. You know, when, when, you know, you hear us for the first time on the radio or you, you know, hear us for the first time when we've written a book or uh, sung a song, that is not the first time the first that time. all of these persons, yes, have come on to their have years behind the door, behind the scenes, behind the doors, years of, of, um, you know, fighting battle, years of coexisting with life as, as you're yeah. walking, what it is that you feel that God has called you to do, you know, falling down, getting up, falling down, getting up. So that's the journey. Therein lies the journey. journey. You've got to put it, yes, you've got to put in the work. So somebody that's out there that's listening, that's, you know, in the midst of whatever they're in the midst of, of, of life happening while they're trying to pursue whatever it is that they're attempting to pursue, know that that is the norm, that that is part of the journey. Am I speaking truth, Shalanda? Man, listen, you have nothing. <laughs> I'm sitting over here like, yes, Father, preach, Father, it's out myself. Like, because, I mean, you know, and a lot of people, and those who are who are listening, who have known, who have watched, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, they some of them have been following my ministry since it started. Some of them, it's been four or five years. Some of it, it's been seven. Some some people, it's been nine already. They, they've been following for a long time. And so when you begin, they can, they can empathize. They can really tell you. Yes, we've yeah. been there. I've, I've, I've been to the mental ward since I've been doing ministry. Do you understand what I'm saying? I've been, you know, we, yeah. we watch this process, and then you got people looking at you like, um, well, if they so with God and, they, and God is so with them, then why they still on this level? Why they still on that level? Come on now. What what story you read in the Bible where they didn't That's go part through of something the before they got to the destination? Come on. Come on. Exactly. So and then they- and then, and then God used that part of the journey to help them yes. to move them forward. He used that part of yes. it because you're helping somebody. You're helping some yep. Stephen Marshall saying, getting ready for a comeback. Getting ready for a comeback. God is amazing. Hey, Thank you, Stephen Marshall. And I know that's my yeah. brother, Stephen Marshall. He's got a, he's got a testimony that. in his in himself. And, you know, he could speak to this very same thing that, you know, we're talking about. So, you know, we just want you all to know out there that all of what you are dealing with and going through right now – even the moments where you feel stagnant, like you're not moving yeah. forward, whatever it is that God has called you to do, because right now you're stuck in whatever is going on in your life. That's part of the journey, too. The, the, the key is to deal with whatever it is, however long it takes you to deal with it, and then keep it moving forward. Keep it moving Absolutely. forward. You know, don't get caught up in a, I should have, would have, could have. You got to keep it moving forward. So, you know, our time goes so quickly. We, we're about done. Our time goes so quickly. Give uh, the no. audience so much. For, we're going to do this again. We're going to do this again. We're going to tell we Batman we're going to do this again. Absolutely. <laughs> but give the, tell Batman yes, what? Give, <laughs> give the audience some, some encouraging words as we, as we uh, transition to the party. Um, oh, Batman, did you want to say something? Did Batman want to say something? Nah, I thought I heard I, his voice. Yeah, you heard me. No, boys. okay. So, <laughs> yeah, Shalonda, tell us where we can find you. That's what she. That's what she said. That's what she was getting. Yeah, yeah. we got sidetracked. Thank you. Well, we are. We are. <laughs> um, you can mm-hmm. find me on um, social media platforms, Inspirational Treasure, and that Inspirational is without the I at the beginning. Um, the only time you will find the I at the beginning of my name is at my website, which is the inspirational dot com. It has the I in it. But other than that, it is just capital N inspirational treasure um, on uh, Facebook, on Instagram, on Periscope, um, and even on YouTube. Please go on YouTube, find me, subscribe, and and just get connected. Um, you can also go to that website. There's a free gift there for you. Please, please, please go get your free gift so that we can keep in touch with you and let you know what's coming next. Amen. Amen. And give our audience a quick word of encouragement as we transition to the Christian party line. I think we might take a music break afterwards. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. (laughs) Um, Well, you know, my my word of encouragement just really feeds off of what you already said. You know, it, it can get discouraging. Nobody is here to tell you that the journey does not have struggles, that it doesn't have trials and tribulations. But if I can encourage you and inspire you to do anything, that is to get into your scriptures and study them out. Begin to read about the people. This is um, the stories in the scriptures are 
are not just to be pretty or fancy. It's to show you that this is how God deals with us in our everyday lives. And so when you begin to get to the scriptures that tell you uh, to rejoice in trials and tribulations and times of temptation, it's not just there for pretty writing. It's there because trials and tribulations are going to come rejoice anyway. And so I want to encourage you to just really live out what you read and live out what you preach and teach so that this journey doesn't have to be as hard as it is if you book it. Amen. 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 I got one more question for you. I already know the answer, but I want to hear it anyway. (laughs) Shalonda Williams, can you feel the power? (laughs) I can feel the power. Yes, God. (laughs) She can feel the the power. power. Feel the power. <laughs> Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of double XI. Power, power, you are listening to Jerry Wars Live Worldwide Podcast. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Prozive Power 21. Jerry was live worldwide. family it's time now you know what it's time for it's time for the ladies of radio christian radio right here on the christian party line with shay samuel what's up shay shay what's going on hey hey jerry voice aka the batman hey man what's up what's up welcome welcome Back to Atlanta. Welcome. <laughs> you yes. back? You back? Are yes, you back yes, in Atlanta? Yes. She's back, y'all. All right. I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't hook up with you. Batman was so excited. I. Man. I know. I know. I know. Between the rain, training, all that, it was just. It was no snow. Just snow, snow crazy. <laughs> the first day. It was crazy. I know. It wasn't meant to happen. Me and Jordy was ready. <laughs> We had, the, we had the shop set up. And you know, yeah, we had balloons and, you know, and everything. Yeah, I was like thirty-five minutes. I was like thirty-five minutes away from you this time, like right next to the airport. Yeah, maybe we should have put the cameras out yeah. to you. Yeah, 
I know Re- reality. I didn't. I didn't realize that Baltimore had a casino. Oh yeah, they got two of them downtown I didn't and know uh, that. down I, the street from where you were. Yeah. Yeah, I had no clue. Yeah, I had no clue. I actually got a chance to go inside. The Cheesecake Factory is in there, and um, I just felt like I, I saw a whole nother a whole nother side of Baltimore. Man, you gotta get. Have you been downtown to the harbor yet? Yeah, I've been to the harbor. I I mean, I used to go to the harbor when I was younger, but the last time I was there in the harbor was probably about two years ago, um, again, for work. But the, the hotel, we say, it was right in between. You oh, know, okay. it was funny because there was uh, um, the harbor, which is by Phillips Seafood, and mm-hmm. then there's another harbor. So I kept saying this harbor that I was at, I didn't realize they there was two harbors built now. Yeah, I mean it's all connected. You got East Harbor and West Harbor. Yeah, yeah, East and West. Right. They call it. Yeah, so, and then the pavilions so, is like it, in I the middle, th- right? Was it always? Oh, it was popping in the pavilion. They had, um, they had art. Well, I guess, I, I guess it was like a, last October. I was um, in Baltimore in the harbor, walking around in October, and there was some concerts or something going yeah. on behind. Mm-hmm. Um, was it Papados? Um, is it Papados or I know it's right across from Phillips, but yeah, so you, yeah, yeah over there, the yeah, the Pavilion. You talking about um, Pier Six? That's where they have the live concerts at, like you know, like Lisa yes. Keys and Paula Bell. They that's where they play at, right there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Regina Bell, yeah, so. and all them. Yeah, be popping up. You sit yes. over there, McCormick and Smith, and eat eat seafood and listen to the music for free. That's what we do. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean it's. It's it's seriously like well I walked down there with a group of friends and it was just it was October it was kind of like fall but it wasn't too oh, cold. Oh yeah, that's the best weather. And, that's the best um, time of the year. Yes, it was the best weather and just knowing all of that is down there now. Um, I I didn't feel unsafe. You know, people oh, no, not, talk not about around there. No, big. that area right there is well protected. I mean that from the east to the west. I think all the way around Key Highway. To Under Armour is, is is heavy security. It ain't no ain't no crime breaking up. Matter of fact, all the way to Johns Hopkins complex. Yeah, because they got hotels mm-hmm. down there too. I didn't even know it. I, I thought I was on the wrong side of. No, I thought I was in DC <laughs> when I was over there. I was like, wait a minute, where this come from? Yeah, yeah. they yeah, they, they built that all. Far, up. It goes far down too, because there's there's a, another place that I I called an Uber to. Um, mm. We had a Christmas party, our Christmas party there last year for oh, work, must and been it was Broadway right on Street. the harbor. Must have been Broadway. Very pretty. On Broadway is nice, too. That's where all the really, really good seafood, because they owned by families. They run down Broadway, mm-hmm. all that area, and mm-hmm. that's like going through Fells Point and Canton. That's all built up right now. Take That take you all the way to yeah, 95, right. like you're going to the shipyard, you know, where the ship come in at. Yeah. The cruise ship. Yeah, yeah. it is growing growing and it's very nice it's very nice so i encourage Mm -hmm. you if you are in the baltimore area or visiting the baltimore area down the harbor is the place to be i don't know if the other harbor gets a lot of action though if the older harbor gets that what's what's the older one is that the east harbor no the east harbor is still new too that's only like three years old maybe four see the other side that you're talking about the west side of the harbor is where the Carlton. The Colton uh, Ritz at that's where all the big fat money at. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's not where we stay. That's not yes. where okay. all the ho- all the so, hotels. That's where most of the expensive stuff at. But you swing around the east, that's where all the the food in the storefront. You know, all the yes. clothing stores and the condominiums. That's where all that stuff. Yep. At. All the way to. I loved it. You know what? Have you? You know, matter of fact, if you walk across the harbor all the way like with the original new original museum that's like they got townhouses all up and down there all the way down what's that Elisinia in boston street all brand new condominiums it's nice townhouses oh i love it yeah it's incredible it's it's unbelievable I we're love gonna it. film down there um this spring me and jordy Yep. Well, look, it's time for us to do it. the I'm show. Gonna it's going to have to come in the spring. It's, it's time for the show because we, we be talking all night. It's, y'all got to y'all gotta get off my line at 1 <laughs> o'clock. <laughs> Maybe I got to go to bed. Maybe I got work to do. Stephen Turner, been all, they've been all over me about their websites and stuff. 
All right, ladies, go ahead well, and you, have your show, you Batman, on <laughs> Batman on Me. Batman on Me. Go ahead and interview him, Shay. Go ahead and interview him. Thank you so show, much. Man. You know, that's what I was going to do. Just go right into the interview. <laughs> thank you so much, Batman. It's she, always she, she a trying to get away. I she, thank you for sharing your platform with us. Amen. If you are just joining us, this is the Christian Party Line with your girl, Shay Samuels. And I know that my sisters are on the line because I just heard my sister, Shalonda Williams. Woo -woo. Hey, <laughs> you and Lady Wisdom were having a good time at the 11 o'clock hour. Absolutely. It was wonderful. I mean, I, I'm honored. I mean, Paula is, um, Paula G is amazing. And so to even have time and space on her platform was just phenomenal. I'm honored. Yes, and it's after midnight, so she is Lady Wisdom after midnight, and I know she's listening. Shout out. She will not be joining us tonight. She is traveling, but we love her so much, and we know that because you were on the line with her before, you're going to bring a bit of that wisdom with you. So thank you so much for staying on the line with us. And my sister is back on the line with us, Chanel Lynn Malloyd. Hey, hey, hey. Good morning. Hey, hey, hey. Good morning. <laughs> I who oh, asked for you? Uh, oh, I had an interview with Tina Hobson. Shout out to the superwoman of radio, Tina Hobson. I had an interview with her last night, and she said, "Where is that Chanel Lynn Malloy?" <laughs> <laughs> did she? Wow, <laughs> she did. She said you had a phenomenal like, interview with her. You had a phenomenal interview with her, and so you yeah. are one of those people that people interview and they remember. Um, they had such a great time with you, and I promise you, they always say you tear the house down when you get on their, on their platform. So God bless you for that. And we are glad to have Praise you God. on, you know, here with us because we get that every Friday. So thank God for that. And then <laughs> did we have Patrice it's Jackson in the house. Hey, family. Good morning. Hey, Patrice. How are you? I am doing good. Your interview was, um, like, amazing yesterday. <laughs> to see a piece of it. Uh, she said, we need oh, an encore. Need to need to oh, well, she put it up now. So, again, if you were just joining us, I did have an okay, interview yeah. with Tina Hobson, the superwoman of radio. And it was, she's so fun. Oh, my mm, goodness. She is. she is so she fun is. and so real. And, you know, she said mm -hmm. to me, she said she had been, she said, I always keep it in my back pocket. When people get me, I'm going to get them back. And so she was like, <laughs> me being on the interview with her, she was getting me back because she was in the hot seat now, I, you know. But I had such <laughs> an awesome time with her, and I'm looking for the encore. Um, and I just appreciate the fact that what she said was amazing. We are all sisters on, um, you know, podcasters, and there's no competition in the podcast world. We all share the platform with one another. We recycle one another. And we can never, like the podcasting with us can never grow old because there's just so much love to give. And so I appreciate her for saying that. And Amen. we'll give a shout out too to all the other podcasters out there, Re and Felicia and all the other podcasters who are um, pushing their, uh, their brand and their podcast. We love you. We love you. We love you. And we thank you for sharing your platforms with us. Oh, and Dr. Trinnell, of course, Dr. Trinnell is making some moves. So shout out to Dr. Trinnell. Um, and do we have Lakeisha Mosley on with us tonight? This yes, morning. Good morning. Hey, hey, hey. Good How morning. Are you this morning? Hey, I'm my well. Sister. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> you know what? Uh, our sister Lakeisha is like the older sister who kind of sneaks in on us when we are literally have. You know, it's like you don't know you don't know if she's in the house or not, but she's there. Right, she peeks right on in. We're behaving, sis, for right now. <laughs> oh, we are always in tune. I love it. So <laughs> we are we behaving. Yes, we are. So I'm ready to have a good time. I know that we are going to end promptly at one o'clock. Shout out to Next Man Up, Dr. Paul Kelly, and all of his guests, and to again Paul G, Lady Wisdom after midnight for the eleven o'clock hour. We cannot forget Jerry Voice Live worldwide aka the fat man and tonight we have an awesome well this morning I'm, I'm getting used to that this morning we have an awesome awesome discussion um i didn't get a chance to hear next man up and i did not i, I heard the end of apology and 
uh, our sister Shalanda. But I want to talk about and what we're going to talk about tonight. The title of this um, Bible study is Sinners, Self-Deception, and it references um, John, uh, 1 John 1, 8 and 10. Um, I like to go through the key points, but I'm, I'm going to break them down because there are some that stick out to me. And so what we're going to talk about tonight um, really is kind of a spinoff of this whole idea of us being sinners and being made whole. And um, we have gotten to the point where we are, and I said this last week um, on another show, but we have gotten to the point where we're so um, heavenly bound that we're no earthly good. And it kind of hinders the fact that, um, and what I mean by that is someone will read something and say, I'm a sinner. You know, um, my business partner will always talk about you know, we are told we're not, we're no more than filthy rags. And, you know, we are put in a position where we stay bound in the sin. We know that we're not sinless, but we mm-hmm. move and we operate as if we have not been forgiven. And the unfair mm-hmm. part to that is that if we believe that Jesus did all he did for us, You've heard my song just for me. If we believe that Jesus did all he did for us, why are we not walking in that freedom? And so that's the spinoff that I want to, I want to talk about that tonight because we will all talk about the sin. We will all talk about how we, you know, we, we understand that we're not, you don't know how many, how many messages I see on Facebook where people are saying, I'm not deserving You know, God did this for me, and I'm not deserving of it. And who is teaching us this? Traditionally, we are, you know, we are aware of that because that's what the law would say. But the New Testament is all about grace and mercy. So when do we move over to the New Testament? And that's what I want to talk about tonight. So, Sister Shalanda, I'm going to start with you, and then I'm going to go to my sister Chanel. But when do we start moving over into the New Testament where grace and mercy lies. We need to do it today, like now, right now. Are <laughs> <laughs> you going to shoot me first day? You, know, you, <laughs> you had to know I was over here bubbling up, like, come on. <laughs> Listen, let me, let, let me tell you. Now, now I'm, I'm not, I am not, Um, first of all, that whole thing about filthy rags, it says as filthy rags, as filthy rags, which means how many, how long do you let your filthy rags sit around the house before you throw them in the washing machine? Come on. Oh, right. Wow. And so once you throw them in the washing machine and they've been washed, then they're washed. You put them in the dryer, you dry them off, you fold them up, you put them up and let them sit, do whatever it's going to do. And then it, after it gets dirty, come, I feel the Holy Ghost. After it gets dirty again, then guess what you do? Put it back in the washing machine, let it be washed, right. and then it's clean. It's the same way with us, grace and mercy. Are we sinless? No. But Jesus had enough confidence in us to tell us, I need you to be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect, which means I have enough faith in you that you're going to grow to be spiritually mature in this thing. You're going to work at it day after day after day. And when you get filthy, that's why I died, so that you can be cleaned again, cleansed again. And then if you do it again, guess what? I'm not telling you to do it just to do it. But I'm saying that when it happens, I have the formula to cleanse you. You are cleansed. You are done. We live with a shame and we live with a guilt and we live with all the stuff. And yes, it is bondage and it needs to stop today. Yep. Let's walk on in. Yeah. I'm going today. Today. Day. Yeah, yeah, and I love how you said that because we we soak in that we we literally soak in the filthy part and we get ourselves so beat up we feel like failures. That's where the whole I'm not qualified. I'm not. That's what living in the sin does. So I like how you put that. At one t- at one point, you're gonna have to take those filthy rags. You're gonna have to put them in the washer. You're going to use them again, and they're going to become filthy again, and then, and that's, you know, equivalent to the sin, and then you're going to have to put them back in the washer. And so if we believe that Jesus' blood was shed on the cross for us, then why are we keeping those rags in the bathroom? Get them out. Clean them. Wash them. That's what Tide is for. (laughs) Chanel, what do you say? What do you have to say about that? Um, I have to say... 
um, that you know how um, a lot of people. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever experienced this, you know, growing up in the church, but like some people would say, you know, just about everything that you did, you know, you was going to, you know, die and go to hell, you know, Mm -hmm. it kind of made, it kind of gave me this uh, way of this self condemning way of thinking, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, a lot of people, um, a lot of people, you know, would teach when well, you're going to hell, you're going to hell, you're going to hell so much to where you automatically um, have this embedded in your mind and in your spirit to where you feel like there's nothing that you can do that would really actually even really even please God. But the thing mm. that I love about God uh, through his word is how his love, you know, his love is what took him to the cross and then how. He is all knowing, um, meaning, you know, he knew, he knows everything, you know, about us, even before the world was formed, even before mankind was created, you know, and he knew that we needed him. He knew that we were going to need him. Um, and yet he still chose us. And, you know, a lot of times we walk around in self condemnation, but the word of God clearly says that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who don't walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, the thing about it is you have, you do have to strive to walk after the spirit on a daily basis. Paul even explained about how you have to mortify your members that he even explained how a war was going on within his members. He said that when I want to do right, wrong is always present with me. So when I do sin, it is not me that sin, that it's not myself or my spirit that sins, but it's the sin that is in me that sins. But he said, but I thank God for Christ, who sacrificed, basically, I'm ad-libbing, but who sacrificed his life for me, you know. So now, though I'm not perfect, I strive for perfection. I'm not perfect, meaning I have no perfection in my own righteousness. There is nothing that I can do within myself that would ever be uh, qualified enough, you know, for God to be pleased with me according to what I do. But my faith in God and what he did for me when he was crucified is what pleases God. Yeah. And that's what makes, you know, his love for me, what he does for me makes me want to serve him. You know what I'm saying? Make me yeah. free enough to walk it's in his good. love so that I can help my fellow brother and sister as well who may be overtaken in the fault. It will help me to restore them and not condemn them because I'm myself and I'm no longer walking in condemnation. Amen. Amen. I want to, I want to add to that too, because we're, we are, we are um, referencing first John um, for our Bible study, but we are talking about the idea of us believing that we are filthy rags and that these, you know, this, this old Testament behavior um, needs to transition to the new Testament. As my sister Shalanda said today, (laughs) today, and and Isaiah 64, six says, we are all infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, they are nothing but filthy rags. And I want to stop there because what the Bible says in the New Living Translation says, when we display our righteous deeds, not that we are filthy rags, but when we display, there is an action that takes place before you are considered the filthy rag. And it's not you that's considered the filthy rag. It's the righteous, the over-religious, the overthinking of biblical principles, um, the way you treat people and church because you feel that you are better, so on and so Mm -hmm. on and so on. When we display Mm -hmm. our righteous deeds, they are nothing but filthy rags. So now Mm -hmm. that you have an understanding of that, you can understand now that God is not saying that you are the filthy rag, your deeds are the righteous deeds that you do. So you can play church, you can play preacher, you can play pastor, you can play teacher, Mm -hmm. you can play prophet, you can play all of these things, but none of that matters. Those things are like filthy rags, like autumn leaves. um, They wither in the fall and our sins sweep us away like the wind. So 
to me, that just addresses the fact that we, <laughs> we take on uh, language or we take on um, what we're called without research, of course, can you imagine somebody coming up to you saying you're a filthy rag and then you just, you just take that on? Somebody says, you know, a doctor says, um, you, your, your doctor says that you, you know, well, you have the flu um, or you have cancer or you, you're diagnosed with diabetes, you know, and they, they, when, they, when they talk to you, they don't call you by name. They call you by your diagnosis, right? Mm-hmm. And you're, you're allowing that. You're allowing, you're allowing it to happen. Um, it's the person over there with cancer, the person over there with the diabetes. And guess what? You stand up and you come because you've already identified with it. I remember my conference last year when we had someone speak about um, what you think of yourself. And this is the health portion of the Goddess and Everything Women's Conference. And the health portion, she asked people, she said, what do you think of yourself? And if you can imagine the number of women who said, I, I think I'm overweight. She said, do mm. you believe that? And they mm. said, yes. Mm. Uh, I, think, I think that I'm ugly. Do you believe that? They mm. said, yes. How do you know? Because such and such told me that. Somebody right. else said, I have diabetes. Um, and she mm. said, do you believe that? Well, that's what the doctor told me. Mm. So, oh, Sister <laughs> Lakeisha, I'm going to come to you mm. and I'm going to ask you, this this whole this scripture here in itself is talking about our deeds, yet we've taken on the fact that we are nothing more than. Can you address can you address how to overcome the how we overcome a transition into we are more than? Oh my gosh. I am so ready for this. I, I'm literally beating <laughs> on this because this has been a question of mine for years and understanding mm. my worthiness. Like, you know, I understand, okay, God, you said that I'm worthy. You said that, you know, you've taken away, you know, my guilt and shame, but I still feel it. What's, what's going on here? And God uh-huh. just took me to a process, right, to understand why I still believe in this guilt and shame. And you mm-hmm. said something so profound, my sister. You said, you know, uh, you know, am I ugly? The young lady said, am I, uh, you know, am I ugly? And she said, yes. And you said, you know, well, do you believe that? Yes, because someone else told that to me. And mm-hmm. what God told mm-hmm. me, oh, my goodness, Holy Spirit told me this recently that, you know, the guilt and shame is so easy for us to believe in that momentum of deception is because I still believe what others say about me. And because I still believe what others say about me, um, that momentum is stronger than what God is saying. Hello? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, you can mm-hmm. hear me. Okay, I was making sure you hear. Mm-hmm. That momentum is stronger, <laughs> is stronger right. Come on. than what others, right. you know, uh, the, uh, what others are saying is stronger than what God is saying. So in other words, uh, remember, God is a still, small voice. He's not going to yeah. scream. Mm-hmm. He's not going to take a bullhorn and say, believe me, I love you. It's true. I'm here with you. Okay? But the problem is, is that the, the voices of others is louder. Mm-hmm. And it's believable because we believed it all our lives. You know, that's what mm-hmm. needs to be deactivated, and that takes a process. It's mm-hmm. not an overnight process. I'm just keeping it real. It's not overnight. Mm-hmm. And what it is is when you begin to understand that I have taken on this, you know, baggage of guilt and shame everywhere I go, you know, I can't hear God. Remember, God is always joyful. God is always uplifting. But I can't hear his mm-hmm. voice if I still believe in the voices that I believed all my life. It's like this. <laughs> If someone told me that, you know, I'm a liar and that I am, you know, I am shame and that, you know, I am ugly. And I say, wait a minute, I I don't believe that. That's not true. No, 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 no. You're wrong. You are ugly. You are a liar. And it's like, Mm. wow. You know, and I keep Mm. hearing this over and over again. You must be right. You must be right. So you you don't realize you've internalized the lie where you, you propel the truth. So it's hard for you to believe in the truth because you've believed this lie for so long 
it's, it's subconscious. You don't even realize that it's going on with you until you begin to do that spiritual surgery and begin to allow mm-hmm. God to strip those lies away from you. And then you'll see clearly and you'll begin to say, wow, this isn't true. Your word says that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. I see this now. Come this on, is true. On, on. Oh, no. You got to get thee behind me, Satan. No, this is, this is not. And until you become bold about it and really Come see on, it and get clear understanding, you can't mm-hmm. stand on the truth. And that's just real. So when you begin to get around others who's only going to speak life into you versus the ones that are really just there you know, to make you feel good but really don't believe in you, there is a difference. That's when you're able to receive the truth and really hear that still small boy voice of the Holy Spirit telling you his love for you all the days of your life. Amen, amen. And I, I do want to add to that because Genesis 126 talks about us mm-hmm. being made in God's image. So that still small voice is your voice. And that's the thing that you are combating. So when you talk about the still small voice, your voice overpowers the voice of others, and yet you allow it to be this little puny thing. I, I remember seeing an image of, um, oh, my goodness, this was my image, so just bear with me. Um, a while ago, probably about two years ago, um, I was at an event that I personally felt like I should not have been. I was there to support someone else. And I had never seen anything like this. This was um, not going to go into whose event it was because it was a mainstream artist. But I was very shocked at what I saw there. The rappers that were rapping there, you could not tell the difference between secular music and um, and the music that they should have been singing. And there were younger kids, five years old or so, there twerking to the music. And this was Christian music. Um, and they, the girls were twerking to the music. And so I was trying to do everything in my power to get out of this place. I promise y'all, I, it was so funny because one of the rappers, know, he knows me, like, what are you doing here? <laughs> right? And I remembered my prayer. I remembered to see the things that are unseen. I remember my prayer. I remember that my prayer was to see the things that were unseen. When I'm in my regular world doing praise and worship, I'm at a church service probably at 11 o'clock. We may finish up as praise and worshipers at 3 o'clock, no later than 7, right? So I would have never seen this underground world of what's going on. I would never know what to pray for. And I remember this visual afterwards because there was a guy there that I had met earlier in the day right? And this guy did not take to me well. He ended up being at the second event. And so when I said something to another person, he said, here's the thing. He said, the queen of worship met the king of darkness. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. He said, he said, how ironic is that? The queen of worship met the king of darkness. And it explained this visual that I had. I had a visual that night of a little girl standing, which I'm assuming was me, in the middle of a dark room, and it was just a light shining. And this big horse-like ram, it had a horse face, but it had ram ears, and it just looked down at me, and it huffed to the point where the the um, smoke oh. came out of his nose, right? And it blew mm-hmm. at me, and I never moved. I looked this thing right in the face. <laughs> I, looked, I looked this thing right in the face. And the next day when I was told the queen of worship met the king of darkness, I said, oh, that's exactly what that was. That's exactly what that was. Wow. I would not back down from the fear. I would not back down from the fear. And that was what my visual was showing me, that we cannot mm. back down from the things that are spoken over us. We cannot back down from the things that people told us we are not qualified to do. We cannot back down from the diseases these doctors are telling us we have. We may (laughs) on the surface, but there are things that we can do. Stop calling. I have a friend who always says, oh, it's this. No, it's not. No, it's not. If the Bible talks about our word having that much power, why are we, why are we settling for filthy rags? 
Patrice Jackson, I'm going to come over to you because I need to understand. We want to talk about how to overcome this filthy rags mentality, and we want to get the listeners and the viewers tonight how to understand this, that the Bible says now that we understand it, that our deeds, our righteous deeds are like the filthy rags, not that we are. So we want to try to get people to understand tonight that today is your transition over into the New Testament. Um, I mean, I think for me, the way that I'm, you know, hearing what everybody else is saying, and I, I totally agree. I think that we need to make sure that we have the right people to start speaking, um, basically death or just negativity over us. Um, we need to also, one thing I was thinking about when you first said something about it was that, um, uh, when you first said something about it, I was thinking that we need to, make sure that we realize that we don't want to put that that pressure on us, right? You know, because if you feel like, you know, mm. we, we are, we, you going into, you know, being a Christian and feeling like you're dirty, that you're not worthy, that this is going to be like this negative experience, that you have to be this martyr and you have to struggle, you know, through your Christianity, and that's not what God wants. You know, the point in the New Testament is for us to be happy, to have joy, to be able to, be wonderful representation of God's love and, and what mm-hmm. he wants for us so that we can, you know, be people that people, to be able to, you know, get other Christians, to get people who are lost, you know, but if you're going into it, you know, telling people, oh, you know, I have this wonderful God and, you know, he's, you know, he's so great, but then they're looking at you and you're miserable or you're not happy or you, you know, you feel like you, come you know, on, Christian, or you always have to struggle or, who wants that? Nobody wants that. Come life. on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you have to be, you know, sometimes I, like, sometimes I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm very optimistic at times. And for some people that can be very annoying, but I have to be committed to that because although my life is not perfect, and, it would ne- and I know my life would never be perfect as long as I am here on this earth. However, I know that I have a God that loves me. You know, that I know that no matter how bad it gets, I have a God that is going to comfort me, who is going to hug me in the middle of the night and say, just hold on, I got your back. This is just a moment of a lifetime, an eternity of joy and love that I have for you. And we have to not let that feeling of unworthiness or that feeling like you are a dirty rag weigh us down and, and, and not let it allow us to be the representation that we're supposed to be. Amen. And the other part of this, the other part of this, um, you know, it, it's not a contradiction, but it actually folds into what we're talking about. The bottom line of this Bible study was it said if we deny the presence of sin, we have self-deceived and are denying God's word. Yet though sin is always present, so is its remedy. Though yeah. sin is always present, so is its remedy. So sin need never be hindrance to the relationship with God. So for everything that we just talked about, there is a remedy. And this faith walk, the remedy is by the spirit, by the spirit. Get around people who are speaking. You know, it's just like in business. I tell people, I always say, find someone that's already where you want to be. You cannot be around people who are trying to where you want to be and have, keep on talking about where you want to be and they give you their own advice and they sitting at the same table with you. So you have to get around people who are literally where you want to be and they will start telling you how they got where they are. So it's the same thing. If you want to, if you want to understand how to control diabetes and get over diabetes, I don't know why I'm talking about that so much tonight, But if you want to know how to get over that health issue, talk to people who have overcome. Mm. Amen. Talk to people who have overcome. Talk to people who overcome. If you want to to overcome this battle in your mind that you are the filthy rag, talk to people. You have four sisters. One, two, three, four, five sisters. Is that me too? One, two, three, four, five. Yes. Five sisters <laughs> on this line. <laughs> Don't be afraid to say in the comment section, I want to overcome. And I promise you, one of us will reach out to you. One of us will talk with you. 
This is not just for radio. This is our everyday lives. We want to see you overcome. We want to see you overcome. The law is what's keeping us stressed out. The law is what's keeping us bound. The law is what's keeping us sick. Mm. How is it that we can see a red light, green light, and a yellow light and know what that means and obey that more than we do God? Come on now. Yes, How is that possible that we can see a stop sign and we know to stop? But when we get these signs in the in the in our spiritual walk, we still figure, well, you know what? It, it, it that that can't be right. You don't see a yield sign and say maybe it's telling me to stop. And you don't see a stop sign and say maybe it's telling me to go. Oh, Lord. So why are we accepting these things that aren't, we're, we're not accepting our spiritual signs. So Chanel and Lloyd, I'm going to come to you. Why are we not accepting the spiritual signs? I think it's easier for people to believe what they see right. more than what they don't see. Oh, come on. Yes, Lord. And so then, you so, know, so, so, so I got I have to step in there because then the Bible says, yes. how can you love, how can you love your brother and who you, you have not? Uh-huh. Exactly. Come, come on. Come on. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> you are right. So right. How can you love your brother? Oh, you, you see. But you cannot love God whom you have not seen. Uh, you know, faith, just like the Bible, you know, the Bible says that faith, you know, comes by hearing and hearing um, the word of God, you know, and a lot of, a lot of people, even after, you know, getting say, you know, um, in the church, you know, don't have the, um, I guess, the the zeal or the, you know, the want to um, get in the word of God. Some people don't see how essential um, or how, you know, how important it is to feed yourself the word of God, how to study to show your own self approved, you know, um, the word of God, you know, is a powerful, powerful tool. It's, it, it's, 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 first and foremost, it's, it's food for your spirit. It's, it's yes. nourishment, you know, yes. and it's also a weapon against the enemy and not just the enemy, uh, uh, outside of ourselves, but the enemy within, we are our own yes. greatest enemy. And yes. it's hard for us to get out of that old way of thinking. We we grow up, you know, believing in what we see. We grow up believing what people tell us. You know, when you're yes. little, you grow mm-hmm. accustomed to, oh, you're, you know, whether you got words of encouragement or if you got words that tore you down growing up, you grow custom to knowing who you are by what people say. But yes. the thing about it, though, is it changes when... You step into the body of Christ. It changes. Your identity changes. And then you come into a new reality, the real reality, you know, which is, is, is spirit versus, you know, the natural man. And so, so it's like you have to learn how to have, you know, the mind of Christ. You have to learn how to, how to you have to learn what God says about you through his word. You have to know, you know, or, or learn what God has called you to what your purpose is, you know, on this earth, learn who your identity is, you know, in, in God, so that you will know that no matter what anybody has to say about you, no matter how anybody feels about you, no matter what comes up against you, the word of God in you is strong enough to combat anything that you face on this earth. So, so what you see a stop sign. If God say, go past that stop sign, you better move. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> because Cause with that vision <laughs> comes <laughs> provision. Yes. And, and you know, the thing about it, yeah, and, and you know, you your faith know grows. My God. Yes. Mm. And your faith grows more and more once you come up, once you come up against some kind of adverse situation or an adversary of some sort and, and you start to uh, 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 be obedient to what 
God told you to do and how to handle this situation or how to handle this person according to his word, you will see God move on your behalf. And yes. so the more we see that, the more our faith grows. And then even in that, the more our faith pleases God. And so then, you know, then we'll have faith to say, uh, uh, diabetes, you're going to hell today. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Mountain, you, you know, are moving today. That is, and, that, and that's, that's what we <laughs> need to Come see. On today. <laughs> today. Come on today. Somebody hashtag that, please. Come on today. Come on today. <laughs> It is the truth. It's the truth. Let me tell you, it's it's the truth because we really have to get to that point where tomorrow can't, it can't wait until tomorrow. It cannot wait until tomorrow. It can't wait until tomorrow. You know how many people, I mean, come on now, when God went from law to grace and mercy, he probably looked at these people in the Bible like, okay, the law was meant for us to know right from wrong. (laughs) And he probably is shaking his head like these fools. They are holding themselves bound on this law. Oh, you can't wear jeans in church. Oh, you can't wear this. Oh, you can't sit up front. And I'm not ba- I'm not banging on the church. I'm just saying this is how overly religious. This is that righteous deed that makes us filthy rags. So I want to challenge people to understand even on the streets. You know, I went to visit my mom's church. And um, technology allows us to have apps on our phones, right? And so it's an older church, and my aunt was sitting next to me. Hopefully she's not listening, but if you are, I love you, I love you, I love you. And, yes, I'm using you as an example. But she was sitting next to me, and Pastor said, turn to this scripture. And I pulled out the phone, and she said, you can't use your phone in church. Like she was thinking I was about to get on the phone. But the thing is, is how are you paying that much attention to me that you saw that I was pulling out my phone? It was almost like they were thinking of telling me what not to do. So church, Mm -hmm. people, body of Christ, we have to get out of the what we can't do and start Mm -hmm. understanding and teaching what we can do. Because that's Mm -hmm. where the New Testament came in. Because law, grace and mercy needed to replace the law. Everyone was being told what not to do. And guess what? Because they were being told what not to do, they were so afraid of sin. Come on. This is where the word, this is why sin became so detrimental because they were so bound in, I I don't want to sin. And that's where we are right now in this walk. Mm. We don't want to do this because it's sin. We don't want to do that Mm. because it's sin. And go back to what Patrice said, because of that, then we feel like, okay, Christianity can't be this fun. Serving God (laughs) can't be this fun. Why would I want to do this? Because they can't do anything Hmm. and forget the fact that they can't do anything, but they're judging one another while doing it. Right. It's not even coming from the outside in. We we need to know the difference between ritual and tradition and the word of God. How many times have you heard, well, this was said, godliness is based to cleanliness. That ain't in the Bible. I'm not saying it's not good. (laughs) (laughs) Come on now. Tell me where it's at. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Go through and be like, oh, my grandmother. And you be like, where is that? Well, my grandmother told me. Or this person said, like, no. But where is it in the word of God? And where is it? We're not researching. Go back to what Chanel said. Chanel said, we are taught these things growing up. And we never do anything mm-hmm. to study to show ourselves the proof. When yeah, I started I searching that. the Bible I'm for not, myself. And I'll be honest, I have been, I used to be guilty of this myself. People had a Bible and they bring it out and they bring it out on Wednesday and Sunday and then they go in the, the back oh. back to, again yes. until yeah, Wednesday. And that's a note, enough to say that they learned that scripture and they can quote it on Sunday. Right. Remember, and I remember, hmm. you remember, I don't know, and I hate to bring this up, but on Living Single with uh, the, the Queen Latifah's character who had to go to the to church she had to take her Bible. She started throwing stuff in it because she never used it. So now she wanted to oh. pretend like she was using it. So she she uh. to make it look creased and right in it. No. Right. It, ought to, it, it comes naturally. You can tell the difference between somebody who uses their Bible every day and somebody who only brings it out on Sundays and Wednesdays. Come I on. Come fear. on. No, I, think I think it's a fear. I think, Shay, you said something earlier that, you know, really we need to consider, right? You know, um, there is still a fear that we will not please God. 
you know, and I'm just I'm just talking from a very yeah. real perspective. And I yeah. think I talked about yeah. it with Paula that, you know, I was I was addicted to sex at one time in my life. And so now mm-hmm. everything that I do, I'm very, very cautious to make sure that I don't fall back into a certain pit. But not only because mm-hmm. I just want to be right, but because the Bible tells us that without faith, right, it's impossible to please God. And yeah. so I think mm-hmm. that we get really caught up in making sure that we don't cross the boundary. You know, when you were get, when you were telling your story earlier about that, that service that you went to and you really couldn't tell the difference between the secular and those who were Christian and the babies twerking and this and that and the other, I think a lot of people, and I think I talk about this a lot, a lot of people preach preventative measures, and that's what they did back in the Bible days. We pre- They preach more preventative measures than they did what the Scriptures actually say. Oh, so come I think on. That, I, think, I think that we're in that place because people are afraid to just not please God. Some people are just self-righteous. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, um, the, the thing that we're reading right now, it was, it was telling, talking about the two men, um, <clears throat> the one that was so self-righteous that he was like, oh, I'm so glad that I'm mm-hmm. not like the Republican, right? And then mm-hmm. the other man is like with his hand hum- humble and saying, God, I'm a sinner, forgive me. I think um, that mm-hmm. <clears throat> people are afraid of becoming that self-righteous one. Because mind you, the Bible does mm-hmm. still make it very, very clear that we are not without sin. Um, and so we are so careful, we want to be so careful that we don't cross mm-hmm. over into it. But like you said, if we begin to teach what we can do, the Bible says, um, Paul said, all things are permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. So now let's talk mm-hmm. about what's permissible and what's not beneficial for you. You, mm-hmm. You're talking about diabetes this time, Shay? Well, guess what? I, I, th- this person over here may be able to eat that loaf of bread and not have no issues. But you, diabetic, can't eat that loaf of bread and not have no issues. So let's begin to dig into a deeper place so people can get out of a place of feeling like I'm never going to get it right. Not true. Mm-hmm. If you walk after the Spirit, and you, you, you may struggle with something, but when you're walking after the Spirit, your heart and your mind and your everything wants to please Him. So you're going to walk towards the thing that pleases Him. But here, listen here, when you begin to think more about what you're not, than what you are, then you are not activating your faith, and so therefore you're already displeasing God. So let's talk about that. You're displeasing Him by not believing that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're not pleasing Him by believing that He is not the Father that can embrace the prodigal son, that's going to love Him no matter what the situation may be. My ex-husband was just preaching about this a few minutes ago, saying, listen, even the prodigal son got greeted with a hug and an embrace. Why? Because God's love never changes. And when we begin to see ourselves in that perspective as that one that yes I may fall but God gave me grace to be able to get back up again I'm not going to beat myself up today for what I did yesterday glory be to God that we can begin to move forward in the things of God instead of being stagnant in the things of God amen mm-hmm. amen Thank amen you. I just I I I I don't know why I picked diabetes I just know that that was just something that just popped out and it became very heavy on my heart and I know that mm-hmm. we as African Americans, we deal with this on an everyday basis and we hear about it more and more. Even people my age are being diagnosed with it and they're doing what they can to make themselves healthy, eat right. We hear Jerry talk about it all the time. You know, he has a documentary all about it, Dirty Diana, I believe it is. But, um, you know, this is just something that it just popped up on me, but there's so many other things. What I would like to do the last few minutes that we have, and since there's five of us, I would love, because here's the thing, we hear the scriptures like the filthy rags. We hear the scriptures that we're sinners. We hear the scriptures that, you know, um, of all the things that our ancestors learned and taught us um, in order, in, in their effort to keep us, get us to move forward, they kept us bound. So today I want to deliver some people. Today I want to today I want to set some people free from the way that these scriptures have been used. So you just learned tonight that in Isaiah 64 it says here that your deeds are like filthy rags. So you aren't. So that's one area that you were delivered in tonight. You should be you should accept it. If you accept it as much as you accept the unqualified and you accept the ugly and you accept it Accept what we're giving you tonight. Hold on to it. Put it in your pocket. Pull it out when you need it. 
but it's not you that is like the filthy rag, the righteous deed. So if you are not over religious, if you are not over righteous, if you are not doing people wrong, then you are no longer a filthy rag, considered a filthy rag. So I'm going to go to my sisters and I'm going to ask them tonight to bless you with a scripture that you can hold on to that reverses the thinking in your mindset. I want to say one more thing before I do that, because I did a study on uh, mind control. That can be a whole nother, (laughs) that can be a whole nother, but I did a study (laughs) on mind control and we don't realize how much we've operated in mind control in, uh, in this faith walk. We've operated in this not knowing that we're operating in it until someone like me starts to study something because God gives me a word and I just go and study it. So we're going to use the reverse of that mind control tonight. And we're, we want to leave you all with a scripture that reverses the curse in so many words that has been placed before you to make you think that you are that filthy rag. So I'm going to start with mm. Lakeisha Moore. I mean, Lakeisha Moore. Oh God. Lakeisha Mosley. I used to work with Lakeisha, Lakeisha oh, Moore. She probably listened to like, what? <laughs> no, but, but that's my maiden name, sis. Get out of here. Uh, hey, I'm not lying <laughs> to you. I was like, oh, how did you know that? I, was like, I don't. God didn't tell me that. God didn't tell me that. Said, we flowing this this morning. Look, look, we flowing tonight. <laughs> yes, God. But he just said, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, we met you, Jesus. We met Jesus. Okay. Lakeisha Mosley, Sister Lakeisha Mosley, what good word do you have to leave the viewers and the listeners with this morning? (laughs) Oh, my goodness. I have an amazing scripture um, that blessed my soul um, that's so important for us to understand um, that it does start with loving ourselves first and understanding that love first. Um, Proverbs um, 19.8 says to acquire wisdom is to love oneself. Um, People who cherish Mm. and understand will prosper. And when you understand the love of Christ that he has for you, you understand that he's with you to take everything from you, just like David. David was that way when he was, that's why he was a man after God's own heart. It's because he was open to Mm -hmm. receive the wisdom and the change in order for him to heal. That's why he was able to go forward. He didn't take on his old burden. He kept moving forward. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. And amen. I told y'all we are going to reverse this thing tonight. We what today? <laughs> hashtag it start. What is it? Hashtag it starts. To, <laughs> come on today. Come hashtag on. come on today. Lakeisha, um, Lakeisha Chanel Lynn Malloy. Um, so I'm going to go with Ephesians um three and nineteen. Well, I'm gonna let, let's start at uh, uh, 16. Uh, it says that he would grant you... Oh, nope, let's start at 14. I'm sorry. It says, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length mm. and height and depth, mm-hmm. and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Did you want us to, to expound on that? I'm so sorry. No, go ahead. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, but, and, and with that being said, uh, with those scriptures, um, being quoted, I just want to say that, um, I mean, it's just clear, it's clear as they in the word, you know, that this is the will of God, you know, for you, that you come to understand and know, you know, God's love and who God, because God is love, but to know the height and the wit and the breath, I mean, it's, it's, the love that God has for you, it's so unconditional. It is so a choosing kind of thing. That means that God 
chose to love you in spite of your flaws, in spite of your quote unquote mistakes, in spite of your sins or your imperfections, God still chose to accept you as his child. And not only that, but to clean you up and put his spirit in you, regardless of what you do, God's love will never fail. And his love will never end for you. And what God wants for you to do is to understand that for yourself, that there is nothing that you can do that will yeah. stop God from loving you. You may even Amen. turn from him and God will still have his, his hands out for you, reaching for you. He will leave 99 to come back and get you. Amen. 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 Whoa. He will leave 99 to come back and get you. Come on. Ah. Patrice Jackson. Patrice Jackson. <laughs> yes. So I wanted to read Second uh, Timothy uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 6 and 7. Um, for this reason, I remind you to fan and to flame the gifts of God, which is in you through the laying, laying on of my hands. For the Spirit of God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So being a Christian doesn't mean that you have to be weak or timid. You have it. It's in you. What you need to be a Christian and what you need to overcome and be worthy and to be um, in God and, and, you know, to be a, be a Christian is all in you. You have self-discipline, you have power, and you have love. And those are things that you can lean on and trust in. Amen. 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 Shalonda Williams. Yes, ma'am. So I'm going to give you, um, I began talking about the prodigal son a few minutes ago. I heard it tonight, but that's Luke 15. Um, read 11 through 32 when you have time, but I'm going to read um, from when he came to himself. And it says, and when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, listen closely, y'all, I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, had compassion, and ran it fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto his father, uh, I have sinned against thee in heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father, mm. but the father, said but to the, the father, servant, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put yes. a ring on his hand and his shoes mm. on his feet and bring his mm. fatted cap and kill it and let us, what eat and be merry for my son mm. was dead and is alive again he was lost and is now mm. found and they begin to be merry listen i i, I will say this. It, this 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 scripture does not tell you that the son did not go off and squander his money it doesn't tell you that there was no sin it doesn't tell you that he did not get out of place no it simply says that despite what we have done despite what the son had done it's the son mm -hmm. that called himself unworthy Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It's it us that call ourselves mm -hmm. unworthy. When Come God on. simply wants us to return. He's not saying that you've never sinned. He is saying that I'm, I'm an enemy with evilness. I don't want you to be wicked, but I love you so much that even when you get out there and you're wicked, when you decide to right. come to yourself and come back to me, I'm not mm. sitting up here trying to figure out how to call out each and every one of your sins. No, I've already yes. called you worthy through the blood of my son. And so when we practicing, God, I'm not worthy. God, I'm not worthy. God, I'm not worthy. He's looking mm. at you with compassion because you yes. have to come home. And so God loves us so much, my God, that when you begin to get up, stand up within yourself and say, listen, I have chosen to have the mind of Christ. Father, please forgive me. Somebody brought up mm. David. David repented so often because he says, listen, you love me so much that every time I repent, you're going to give me a second chance, another chance, and another my chance God. because you love me like that. And so we got to get out of the place where we feel like I'm not good enough. God don't love me like that because mm. somebody told you, remember this scripture read it over and over and over again the son practiced he practiced i'm not worthy i'm no longer worthy no, I'm on. No longer yes. worthy. They shine no more fire i'm no one no longer worthy to be called your son and they, he's practicing it stop practicing it stop practicing yes. it stop telling yes. yourself over and over and over again what you're not stop telling 
telling yourself over and over and over again that God don't love you no more. Stop telling yourself over and over and over again that you're mm. not qualified because of what you've done. The devil is a liar. God is a God of love and compassion. Mm. And guess what? He's just waiting for you to come to yourself and come home. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. 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 Glory Amen. Amen. Yes, mm-hmm. you know, I, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and, and, and end the show right there. There's, there's nothing more that we can say, place. Come on, come on, come on today and <laughs> come stop on. rehearsing it. Stop rehearsing it. So that is uh, the Christian party line. We just want to thank you all for joining us tonight. We pray. We know that it blessed you. We ain't even got to pray about this thing. We know that it blessed you. <laughs> we we are. Look, we going to look. Come on today. We we declare yeah, that it, it it has blessed you. Come on, today means for us too. We declare that this thing has blessed you. This conversation Hallelujah. with all of us, my sister Chanel Lynn Malloy, Patrice Jackson, Lakeisha Mosley, Shalonda Williams, and we will not forget, even though she's not on the line with us, Lady Wisdom After Midnight. We love you guys. I promise you, we do this because we want you to understand the power of God and the victory you have in just knowing that he is God. So that is our show tonight. Again, leave your comments, leave your comments. And if you are ready to overcome, please just put it in the comments. And one of us will definitely reach out to you. We want to hear from you about this thing because this is a new season for you. And we want to be a part of what God is doing. We want to be a part of that transition. Amen. So thank you, ladies. I love you so much. And I have one more question. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Absolutely. (laughs) Positivepower21.org Internet Radio I feel the power podcast. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power. A double X. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. All right, family. We hope you felt the power and thank you so much for joining us. And please share this file. Please share this file. The Christian Party Line with Shay Samuel, Lakeisha Moses, Shalonda Y. Williams, Chanel Lynn Malloy, Patrice Jackson, and Paula G. The Voice. Share the file. I'm Jerry Woods Live. I'm worldwide on Positive Power. Double X Side. She's going to go back. Hey, hey, hey. My name is Davis and I'm from Haiti. But I'm leaving Dominican Republic. I'm here, positive power 21. Jerry was live worldwide. Humble young man, humble. Woo!